the team is the lovers delight. The lovers delight. What does it mean? It means what lovers do to keep the fire of love burning. Things to do that makes your partner delight in you. It also means how to compel and retain the attention and the attraction of your partner, whether in marriage or courtship. It means the things you do to express, to attract, and to maintain love in a relationship. I'll talk on three vital keys. Key number one, understanding and accepting your differences. Understanding and accepting your differences. When I say differences, I'm talking about the gender difference. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, precisely 27, the Bible says, and God created man in his image. Male and female created he them. God created man. He created the male version. He also created the female version. So there are differences between the man and the woman. No wonder the Bible in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 tells men to dwell with their wives according to knowledge. You need to identify the differences. You must know the character traits of men generally, the character traits of women generally. Most people in relationship, they don't know the difference, and so they are in constant friction. For instance, women, when something is bothering them or they are troubled, they want to talk about it. Women like talking. In fact, um, they are more emotional. Their emotion comes first before their logic. That's why you see at times when you see uh, husband and wife, they argue. The man is coming from the logical point of view while the woman is coming from the emotional point of view. If you know how to contain that initial emotional outburst, after a while, their, their logic kicks in. But most men don't know how to understand that. They don't know how to contain it. Men, when they are faced with challenges, they want to give space. They want to isolate themselves and think. And you see some women complaining that this man, whenever there's a challenge, is always pushing me away. That is their normal reaction. Men, they want to think through first before they talk. But women, as they are thinking, they are saying it. That's why at times when you argue with them and you, and you get involved in a quarrel or hot, uh, intense argument, they will deny some things they said. <laughs> when you ask them, boy, you, this is what you said, and I said this one. You said, no. So all the time I've been with you, you don't even love me. This, they don't remember the one they said. <laughs> because they didn't process it. It didn't come through their mind. The thing was just coming from somewhere and was just going out. <laughs> so when they say they didn't remember, it's not that they are lying, but it did not register. <laughs> they allowed their emotion take the better part of them. So any man that pays attention to everything a woman says, you are not ready to maintain that relationship. Because there are things they will say when they are feeling bad. I hate you. Don't call me again. It is over. <laughs> and when you stop calling, they will tell their friends, see, I said it, he does not love me. <laughs> Just more argument we had, he has stopped calling me. But who said don't call again? <laughs> One day lady came to my office and told me that, Pastor, in fact, um, it, this relationship is over. We're not getting married again. In fact, He's like this, he's like this, he's like, it's over, no more, this is the final. And I asked her, what do you want now? Do you want me to talk to him, advise him, or I should tell him to stay away from you? Pastor, I'm telling you, it's over, it's over. I said, tell me, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Now, let us talk. What do you want? Do you really mean the relation? Pastor, I'll call him, I'll advise him, or talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> and if you talk to him, he will listen to you. <laughs> so if you pay attention to everything, 
<laughs> your wife says, or your partner in that relationship says, if you want to pay attention to everything, you, you, at that you may even commit suicide. Are you hearing me? A man called me. He said, Pastor, please advise me. I don't know what to do right now. I said, what is it? He said, I told my wife to prepare a particular dish for me in the morning. And I gave her money. She went, prepared it. As she was about serving it, my mother came with food. So at that point, I was confused. And I went to my wife and I asked her, which one do, what do I do now? You have prepared, my, and my mom has brought food. He said, and she told me, I should eat my mother's food. <laughs> so I went ahead and I ate it. Ladies, you know why you're laughing, Abby? Uh -huh. <laughs> Later in the day, when the man was hungry, he now told her, bring that one you prepared. She said, no. She want to eat your mother's food. Keep eating your mother's food. <laughs> so at that point, the man called, said, Pastor, where did I go wrong? I said, ah. In the first place, you shouldn't have asked her. You want her to now, you want to put her between your mother. No, she will tell you, eat your mother's food. That one was trap. <laughs> and you now form Mugu. <laughs> so now you have visited the judgment. So you have to look for how to buy her gift and make sure she forget that. And if not, if you don't handle it now, the next thing she will do is that she will now transfer the aggression to your mother. Most times you see your wife attacking your loved ones and other people around you. The problem is you. It's not them. That one is just transferred aggression. Praise the Lord. So you should understand the differences between uh, the male gender and the female gender, how they respond to situations differently. Most people don't understand it, and so they keep having frictions. Number two, know the love language of your partner. Know the love language of your partner. Know the love language of your partner. In the book of 1 John 4, it about tells us that God is love, isn't it? But there are various ways God expresses his love towards us. Number one is gifts. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave. So the first love language is gifts, giving gifts. The second love language, as a month ago, to under, know the love language of your partner, is acts of service. Matthew 20, 28, John 15, 13, acts of service. Acts of service. He said, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. John 15, 13. John 15, 13. He said, greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. So one of the ways you show love is by serving. That's some people's love language. Number the Roman figure three, words of admiration or affirmation. Words of admiration or affirmation. Matthew 3, 17, 2 Peter 1, 17. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Some people, that is their love language. They lack admiration. Your wife does a new hair or your partner in relationship does a new hair, gets a new cloth, dresses to please you. You don't acknowledge it, you have entered trouble. So in the house, when my wife uh, makes a new hair, and my children begin to compliment before me, I will tell them, calm down, please. You don't cause problems in my marriage <laughs> before you change it for me. Allow me to admire my wife first and to say something. Don't be doing that thing. Don't cause problems in my marriage. All of you marry and leave me in this house. Don't come and create problems for me. I will stop them and I will take it up, up from there. So I won't have a World War III. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Words of admiration and affirmation. Roman figure four, quality time. Second Corinthians 3, 14. That's talking about fellowship. Fellowship. If you don't spend time with your wife, to come, some people, they say they, don't, they, they can't talk with their spouse. They don't know what to talk. Some people in courtship, all they do is to move from happy bite to best bite to Kilimanjaro and keep the relationship. They don't have time to converse. And some men, when they converse, they just converse shallow things. They don't go deep things. Some people say, I love you. What do you love about me? Uh, I just love you. <laughs> okay, what attracts me? What makes me look attracted to you? I just know I love you. Papa said courtship is investigation for investment. You have to plan the future. 
everything about relationship should be discussed during courtship. So when it comes to the marriage proper, you are only implementing. A man that will want to keep you at home as an educated woman or a career woman or a business woman that wants you to stay at home, that man does not love you. And that is someone you should not get married to. So it is enough to stop the relationship at that point. Because he wants to keep you at home. He wants to enslave your future. All the school you went to and everything you have achieved, he just wants to keep you at home. It doesn't make sense. If you can do that, no problem. Continue. I hear me. But if you know that you react, and most times, when, one of the reasons why you see a, a lot of women nag is out of dissatisfaction. When a woman is not satisfied, either career-wise or in the other room. You understand what I mean? <laughs> Do you get what I, what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's more better. I came to perform is here. In the other room. <laughs> Do you get? Yes. You see them react because they don't talk like men. They take it out on anything. Shoot at sight. They shout here, shout there, and all of that. Praise the Lord. So if you know you can't face it, you can't enjoy it, just tell the man, I like you, but I can't, I can't just stay at home and do nothing. But if you can continue, no problem, go ahead. Number, Roman figure, five, physical touch, Matthew 20, 34, Mark 1, 41. So Jesus had compassion, that is love, compound passion on them and touched their eyes. So touching is part of love. In Bible school, we're talking, and somebody raised up his hand and said, when the Bible says a man should not touch a woman, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1, he said, for the purpose of marriage, a man should not touch a woman. Someone got up in Bible school and asked, Pastor, what kind of touching? Is this surface touching or penetrating touching? <laughs> and I said, it's intimate touching. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So some people, their love language is touch. Some women, you know yourself, some women, they just want you, but some <laughs> One of my colleagues told me, he came to office one day when I was in Bayasa, and he said, Pastor, please pray for my shoulder. I said, what is the problem? Now, did you fight or what did you do with your shoulder? He said, Pastor, my wife likes sleeping on this hand. <laughs> and even when I complain that it's paining me, she always wants to sleep there. Okay, so the hand is, there are some women like that. You must hold them throughout the night. My wife is also like that. When I got married, I'm not used to it, so I will... Hold for that moment. The next minute, I'm at the other end of the bed. And when I wake up, I will rush back to continue. <laughs> but now I'm used to it now. <laughs> now, why, did, why you need to know these love languages? And you need to know your own and know that of your partner. I've seen a relationship where um, people in the midst of conflict, husband and wife um, quarreling and arguing and you want to settle them. The man will say, Pastor, I love my wife. The man will say, For where? He don't love me. <laughs> the truth is that the man loves his wife. Or it can be the other way around. The woman loves the man. But the reason why the spouse is not feeling it is because the man is trying to love her the way he perceives and receives love. Where, whereas the other person feels and perceives love differently. It's like me, I'm trying to speak Yoruba to you, and you're speaking Awusa to me. Can we communicate? So to show you love the person, you have to love the, identify the person's love language and love the person in his or her own love language. I don't know if I'm communicating. That's when the person can now feel your love. Am I communicating? Yes. Praise the Lord. So you, you, you should know and identify. These are things you find out in relationship. Number three, be romantic. Lele, lele. <laughs> be romantic. Now, men's definition of being romantic is totally different from women's definition of being romantic. That's why women say most men are not romantic. My wife has told me several. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Praise the Lord. Now, a woman's definition of being romantic are those little, little things you do all the time to make them feel special, cared for. You see, they are responding already. Aww. <laughs> How 
you can decode what they are not saying. They say one thing and they mean another thing. How to listen to them when they are telling you something and not interject to profess solution. Men, we are solution driven. We are always, our mind is always thinking on how to solve problems. So when they are talking, before they land, you are already there and you are telling them how to solve the problem and they say, you are not listening to me. <laughs> you don't pay attention. They want you to be like their girlfriends. How do women communicate? When they talk, you see a woman complain, complain. That woman will listen, just listen and listen. No advice, nothing. And at the end of the day, hmm. <laughs> and the lady will say, do you know why I like that, my friend? She understands me. No advice. No advice. No solution. The problem was not solved. Just listening alone. She said, I, that, my friend, in fact, nobody understands me like that person. Because at that moment, they just want you to empathize. Just listen and say, oh, ah. <laughs> you mean it? I can't believe it. <laughs> just act drama, just be acting. So at the time my wife is talking, I ask her, is this solution time or just listen? See my husband, just listen. I say, okay, don't worry. Hey, yeah. Is that what happened? Oh, it's so bad. Take us, I mean. Praise God. Men's definition of being romantic is the things they do to get the lady into the other room. <laughs> Men, their own is short. Buy the nice gift, take her out, give her a wonderful time to have sex. The other room. I hear me? So most women say, uh, when they see the man, coming with that leg. They say, I know what you're looking for. <laughs> um, few steps to being romantic. Roman figure one, be open. Be open to conversation. A lot of men shy away from conversation when their wives or partner raises up serious conversation. We'll talk about it later. Some other time. This is not the best time. It's always not the best time. Be open to conversation. Pay attention, listen without interjecting. Be open to discussion. Even discussion about Zauda room, discuss it. What do you like? You let the woman know what you like. The woman should also let you know what she likes for married people. I hear me. You're not the one you now start putting laws and Ten Commandments in that one. There's no Ten Commandments. It's for pleasure. So enjoy yourself. Am I communicating? The man said, this is what I want. Give him. The woman said, this is what I want. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Roman figure two, be clean. For men, avoid bad breath. Body odor. For ladies... Avoid smelling hair. <laughs> and odor in other places. <laughs> Roman figure three, be physically and emotionally fit. Be physically and emotionally fit. Look good, smell good, take good care of your body. Even if you have given birth, you can still look sharp and good. Are you hear me? Don't look like a retired soldier. <laughs> Always know how to look attractive as a man and also as a woman to keep yourself attractive to your partner. And finally, know the rules of the game. Know the rules of the game. Men start with vision. Women start with emotion. 
Men are turned on by what they see. Women are turned on by what they hear and how you treat them. QED. Rise to your feet. You lift your voice and you appreciate God. Lord, thank you for the word I have heard. And I receive grace to be a doer of the word. Pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word we have heard. We receive grace to be doer of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive grace to put your word to work. In Jesus' mighty name.